not be a person. And you really need your mind to to wind around this in order to understand what it is, until you go, aha. You need to hear this so many times. Now we don't have time to make the reflection. We do it when we come back after the discussion group. It doesn't matter, we still have time. Um, so now it's lunchtime. Then you come back here at two o'clock, like after one hour, and then we divide you into discussion groups, and then you try to explain whatever you heard this morning, whatever you already know. Try, if you don't know so well, try not to use these wonderful words like you know, non-inherent, autonomous, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> try to understand the group that is listening to you as if they never heard it. And then we start to see that we don't understand. That's a very good way. And the others just listen. You don't need to correct anybody in the discussion. Everybody takes the time to, to say, how do I understand emptiness? And the others, you just, it's very difficult, I know, but you just shut up. <laughs> you just listen, without body language. <laughs> Don't, okay, you just listen. And everybody tries to understand what they understood, if it's your first time here, what you understood from this morning, or what you understood from the teachings before, okay? But before we go and have lunch, we usually offer it. We offer it to, of course, it's the Buddhist, to all the Buddhists and the Bodhisattvas. You can, off, you can offer it if you have an object of reference, or of like devotion. And we offer it on behalf of all beings, especially the beings who made it possible for us to have this food. And if you would have to think about them one by one, you would still be sitting here this evening and no food. Because we would still be thinking, oh, this one and this one, and then the parents and the grandparents, the grand like this, okay? Yeah. So we just think, we offer it on behalf of all the beings who suffer from heat and cold and from terrible regression. We offer it on behalf of all the beings who are suffering from terrible need, greed, and lack or addiction. Uh, we definitely offer it on behalf of all the animals, not just the animals that we see, you know, like here, I mean, we have vegetarian food, maybe the milk, I quickly explain, so like we, from our own side, we would like not to have cow milk, okay, like it's difficult for the group to put cow milk there, but also we would not want to force people to drink only vegetable milk. Um, so then I said, let people want, if they want to drink cow milk, let them bring cow milk. It's okay, they bring their own. But then they forget, or everybody brings one liter, and at the end we're left with five liters who are, you know, like, and then we have to throw it away. So we actually consume more cow milk than other ones. But I, I really want to make this clear. From the group side, um, most of us are vegan. I'm still in the process of trying to be a vegan, but I'm really trying. Um, it's not easy, but I'm really trying. And the one point, same way as I succeeded with being a vegetarian, I will also succeed, I hope, to be a vegan. I think it's a good thing. Um, and I think it's my contribution also to the environment, not just to the animals, but also to the environment. And uh, so just so that you understand why there's milk. Why there's cow milk in order not to have to throw away in the evening a lot of cow milk. Yeah? Okay? And definitely, you know, when Whatever food we order when we do residential retreats, it's always vegetarian. There's no meat being served from, from the group. So we offer it on behalf of all the animals, like also the insect. We offer the food on behalf of all human beings, and all beings may be in really very pleasant states because they also suffer. You know, we always think it's only the, the poor and the sick who suffer, the rich also suffer. People have everything, seemingly everything. They also suffer from not having everything. It's only in our own eyes we think they have everything they should be happy with. Also, we're always in this state of lack. Everybody, no matter how rich you are, you could always get richer and more things than this now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you just briefly maybe close your eyes and you say thank you to the Mother Earth for the food that we're going to eat, all beings who are involved in creating the food, May this food become medicine for my body. I eat it without attachment or aversion, without arrogance, without pride, only to sustain the body. Because that
that is what food is for, is to keep us alive and healthy. It is not a source for happiness. It can be a condition, but it's not a source. It's not a cause for happiness. Yeah. And the more you think about the beings who have created that food, the more happier you are to eat it because then you eat it with a lot of gratitude. And if you ever have a problem that you don't like the food, give yourself the choice. It is either either this food or no food. That's a very good way of being able to eat everything that is there. You don't need to eat poison, okay? But because of our mind has become very refined and very good food, we also destroy the environment because we produce far too much. Far too much. Okay? And uh, uh, it's going in not a good way. So we, everybody can do something. Not to waste food, especially. And also to get to buy the food that has a little bit, you know, spot on it or whatever. If it would be in your own garden, you wouldn't throw it away if you grew it. Don't be so choosy, you know, you know, like going to all the cucumbers there in the, in the thing in the shop. You would harvest it and you would eat it. Whatever is no good, you cut it and you throw it away. No big deal. And then, whatever you eat, please enjoy it. Because so much effort has gone into producing that food. And it would be really cruel if you don't enjoy it. Okay? You promise? And to enjoy your food. Okay. Thank you very much. And then I see you again, uh, me at three o'clock, I think. Uh, but you come here too. Okay. Thank you.